A hoist in a shipping yard. At zero degrees Celsius, a cylindrical metal bar with radius R and mass capital M is slid snugly into a circular hole in a large horizontal rigid slab of thickness D. Okay, so we have a cylindrical bar that is slid into a slab of thickness D. This bar has radius uh, R and it has mass capital M. So this has mass uh, capital M. For this metal, Young's modulus is Y and the coefficient of linear expansion is alpha. A light but strong hook is attached to the underside of the metal bar and this apparatus is used as part of a hoist in a shipping yard. So there is a hook which is light attached to the uh, underside of the metal bar and we can put a load here so uh, this is going to act as a hoist uh, pulling this mass up. The coefficient of static friction between the bar and the slab is mu sub s. At a temperature T above 0 degrees Celsius, the hook is attached to a large container and the slab is raised. Okay, so the slab is raised, it's attached to a, a large container which has mass M, so you can see that it will be uh, lifted, so this is going to go up, so it will be raised like this. Uh, what is the largest mass the container can have without the metal bar slipping out of the slab as the container is slowly lifted? The slab undergoes negligible thermal expansion. So we're going to neglect the thermal expansion of the slab. However, uh, this metal bar has a coefficient, line, coefficient of linear uh, expansion alpha so it, it tends to expand but it is restricted basically because it's uh, inside this hole so the first thing I want to note is that at a temperature at a finite temperature T greater than 0 degrees Celsius uh, since the cylindrical bar is constrained a thermal stress will develop. Because normally we expect it to expand, but it is constrained, so it will uh, develop. And in which direction will the stress be? Because um, this is inside this hole, and it tries to expand radially outward, so this will be the direction of the stress. So there will be a force per area which is acting radially upward. So this will develop in the radially outward direction. Oh, all right, so uh, what is this stress that will develop? Stress-strain relationship, stress, that's the force per area, sigma, is Young's modulus times epsilon, the strain, which is the force that will develop per perpendicular area, that's the stress, Young's modulus times uh, <clears throat> the stress is in the radially outward direction, so it's delta R over the original radius R. The next question is, what is this perpendicular area? So for this radially outward direction, you can see that this will be the uh, surface area of this cylinder. So uh, the surface area of the cylinder that's inside the hole will be 2 pi R, the circumference, multiplied by the thickness of the slab, D. 
So the perpendicular area we're talking about here is 2 pi r times d. That is the uh, side area, the surface area of the cylinder, except the uh, area of the two ends. All right, so the, it's in the radially outward direction. Now, what will be the change in the radius if we were to have uh, thermal expansion, it is given by the law of uh, thermal expansion, uh, coefficient of linear expansion alpha r times delta t. Uh, if alpha is given per degree Celsius, since the final temperature is t, initial temperature is zero, this will be equal to alpha r times t. So we can write this radially outward force to be a perpendicular area multiplied by Young's modulus delta R divided by R from the stress-strain relationship and for perpendicular area we substitute 2 pi R D Young's modulus for delta R we substitute alpha R T divided by R these R's will disappear and we can write this as a vector if you wish. The force vector is 2 pi r d Young's modulus uh, times alpha 2 pi r d Young's modulus alpha t in r hat direction. So it's radially outward. And notice that this is a normal force for this setup. So if you consider this setup here, what is the direction of the normal force? If we have this sliding down, or the tendency is to slide down, the normal force for this will be in the radially outward direction. So let's consider the free body diagram for the metal bar. All right, so free body diagram for the metal bar. we have uh, three forces that we need to consider. One is basically due to the uh, weight of the bar and the load. Uh, so we will have the gravitational force M plus, uh, capital M plus M, G pointing down. That is the total weight that is pointing down acting on this bar. We have a radially outward force, so let me show it to the right here, but and note that it is actually radially outward, normal force. And there will be static friction which will be opposing uh, the, uh, the weight, so there will be static friction Fs that will develop here, and let's call this my y-axis. So that's the axis on which I'm lifting the weight. Okay, uh, so what is the requirement for it not to slide? For the bar not to slide, what is the maximum load I can have? Uh, I will reach a maximum force of friction, static friction, which will be equal to mu s times the normal force. And I know that this will be equal to mg, uh, uppercase mg plus lowercase mg, because that's the total weight it's going to support. So uh, I can substitute here uh, for the normal force. So the static friction mu s times the normal force 2 pi r d Young's modulus alpha times t must be equal to capital M g plus lowercase m g whose maximum value I'm trying to find. So this will give me for m maximum value uh, you can see here it's 2 pi r 
d divided by g, uh, the coefficient of friction mu s, Young's modulus, alpha times temperature t minus capital M. So this will be the maximum load uh, we can support because it will cause a maximum friction, maximum static friction. And after that, the, uh, the bar will start sliding down. So um, that is the final answer. Okay, so let's summarize what we did here. We have a cylindrical metal bar, which is initially at zero degrees Celsius. Radius R mass capital M is slid snugly into a circular hole in a large horizontal rigid slab of thickness D. So this is basically slid into this uh, slab with thickness D. It has radius R mass capital M. And later on, we learned that it has a Young's modulus y and coefficient of linear expansion alpha. So th this has Young's modulus y and coefficient of linear expansion alpha. And a light but strong hook is attached to the underside of the metal bar. This apparatus is used as part of a hoist in a shipping yard. So we have uh, under the metal bar a hook is attached but it is light so we neglect its weight and there is a load mass that is attached to it and um, this will basically support the total mass and it will act as a hoist and it's slowly lifted up slowly lifting up this uh, amp. The coefficient of static friction between the bar and the slab is mu s. At a temperature, finite temperature t, above 0 degrees Celsius, the hook is attached to a large container and the slab is raised. What is the largest mass uh, for it not to uh, slip? So the, we're neglecting the thermal expansion of the slab. So this basically thermal expansion is only due to the metal bar. So we see that since the metal bar is constrained not to move in the radial direction, it's inside this hole, it's going to develop a thermal stress, which is stress is equal to Young's modulus times strain. Force per perpendicular area is Young's modulus times delta R over R. And the perpendicular area is the surface area of the cylinder, which is 2 pi R times D, uh, not including the top and bottom. And delta R is alpha R delta T. That's the increase in the radius that would normally happen. It was free to move, but it's not free. So we instead develop this thermal stress. So that's a perpendicular Young's modulus delta R over R. So we can substitute for a perpendicular 2 pi R D and for delta R alpha R T. R's cancel. So we find the radially outward force 2 pi r d Young's modulus alpha t in r hat direction, it's a normal force. So it's normal to the surface of the cylinder. And for the metal bar not to slide, we need to look at the free body diagram of the metal bar. We have a total weight, capital M plus lowercase mg, pointing down, normal force which is radially outward, and static friction opposing the weight. And for the maximum static friction, this is going to have the maximum mass and maximum static friction is mu s times the normal force, which is mu s times 2 pi r d Young's modulus alpha t that is equal to mg plus capital MG plus uh, lowercase mg. From this, we can pull out lowercase m, divide the two sides by g and take m to the left hand side as minus m. So this is going to be our maximum load that we can support.